fun. Let's finish 3.2. So this is going to be the end of 3.2 before we get to 3.3. What we need to rewind and just reverse back to for one second is photosynthesis, because this is going to be our topic of discussion that kicks off today when we start talking about how we draw pyramids and where biomass comes from and where do food chains and food webs come from. So the first thing is with photosynthesis, just like with us, when we're eating, you eventually get full, right? So you have to stop eating. Plants are the same way. So organisms that do photosynthesis are the same way. They can only absorb so much sunlight before they need to kind of digest, right? So they need to take in that carbon dioxide and water and light and create or convert that energy into glucose and oxygen. So the light and carbon dioxide are actually going to limit how much photosynthesis can occur. So what will happen is photosynthesis will plateau. It'll increase, the rate of it will increase until a certain point until the plant can no longer take in any more carbon dioxide or any more sunlight. So exposing a plant to more sunlight than normal won't necessarily increase the rate of photosynthesis in a plant, especially if it is excess sunlight, so too much sunlight. All right, now let's talk about today. So today we're going to look at feeding relationships still, but now let's look at biomass because thanks to photosynthesis, that's what allows for more producers. So more biomass is created because photosynthesis allows for there to be more producers. If there are more producers, there can be more herbivores. If there's more herbivores, then there can be more food for the rest of the food chain. So that means if there's high productivity, that means there's going to be more organisms and there could be more trophic levels. So that means we're going to have longer and broader food chains and food webs. So here we have a food chain and a food web. In the center, we're looking at a food chain. Food chains are very direct, one organism to the next. You cannot see if there are any other organisms consuming each other. We only see one organism consuming another, which is consumed by another. So if you look at a food chain and then compare it to the food web, the food web is going to show you a lot of details. So you can see that organisms aren't just fed on or prey to one organism. They could be prey to many organisms. So a food web is going to show you all of the details where a food chain is just going to show you one single direct path. So for example, if we were to say, I'm gonna move myself, if we were to say right here, this krill, was eliminated. It no longer existed. It died off. That means this fish, this sea star, and this shrimp would all be impacted because that is where they are getting their food from. So that means the fish, the sea star, the shrimp would all be directly impacted. But of course, everything that consumes the fish, the sea star, and the shrimp would also be impacted. So we would see this food web shrink. Energy transfer. So when we talk about like kelp, right? Kelp is a photosynthesizer. When kelp, right, does photosynthesis, it's going to release energy, which means that when something consumes the kelp, like a sea urchin, it's going to use the energy from the kelp to have its own energy. And then when the sea urchin is consumed by let's say a sea otter, then that sea otter is gaining energy from the sea urchin. And slowly over time, you'll remember that 10% rule. It's not a perfect 10%. So we're not going to see 10% energy transfer to the exact percentage, but we can see through the efficiency of energy transfer, how energy is transferred from one organism to another. In this case, let's say the sun, which is trophic level one, has 500,000 AU, AKA arbitrary units. So the units are not important for right now, but the kelp is going to absorb the energy from the sun for photosynthesis. It's going to have 5,300 AU or atomic units. 
What you would do in order to calculate efficiency of energy transfer, you're going to take the small number always. So that's going to be the new trophic level, which in this case is the kelp trophic level two. And you're going to divide that by the larger number, aka the sun. So we're going to take 5,300 and divide it by 500,000. And then to get a percentage, we multiply by 100. For this one, we do get 1%. But you'll notice with some of your examples, you may not receive 100% or that 10% rule. So this is going to be 1% energy transfer. Now, why isn't energy 100%, right? If you're eating something, why aren't you getting 100%? Well, the energy is lost. So of course, depending if the organism has to hunt more, they're wasting energy or expending energy trying to find their food. Also eating. Eating is going to, we have to use energy to break the food down. So we're going to lose energy as we are eating the food. Heat, right? So our body produces heat, respiration, making energy. So we lose energy to make energy. We also are going to not eat all parts of organisms. So that means if we're not eating all parts of it, that's energy wasted and the means of energy transfer. Then we also have death, feces, urine. We know that teeth and bones cannot be digested, so that's also something that we cannot break down. Last thing, must know pyramids. So we draw pyramids like this for Ace Marine. They're going to be rectangular boxes. Your rectangular boxes should always be the same height. So between trophic level one, two, three, and four, they should have the same height. And then of course, if you look at the pyramid of numbers, the pyramid of numbers actually is going to tell you how many organisms there are, right? Then we talk about the pyramid of biomass. I'm circling this one because it can be inverted, meaning we can have smaller bars at the bottom and wider bars at the top. So we do have to remember that biomass could be inverted or it may not look exactly like we see across the top with our pyramids. Then we have the pyramid of energy. Basically, that's just talking about how is energy transferred from the producers up to the top level consumers. Look at all the pyramids. It's important to realize we always keep our organisms that are known as autotrophs. That means they create their own or make their own food, right? They're going to be at the bottom. Top level consumers will always be at the top. So for this, please make sure you know all of your pyramids for Ace Marine, you need to know that they are rectangles. We don't draw anything as a triangle. And of course, they, the bars should all be the same height. So if trophic level one is five boxes high on a graph, then trophic level two should also be five boxes high on the graph and so on. All right, everybody, that finishes 3.2. Now we're gonna move on to 3.3. If you like the video, go ahead, like, subscribe below.